welcome back to my video so now i will be explaining about the drone test so before we explain about it we're gonna tell you the important parts about the theory test so you don't need to have a drone test if your drone is under 250 grams you need the drone test that's when your drone over 250 grams and under 20 kilograms so we're gonna explain you about every point so let's explain about it we are going to explain five parts the first one is flying safely and responsibility points one to two part two where you can fly points three to seven part three making every flight safe points eight to fifteen part four protecting people's privacy points sixteen to twenty one part five extra information getting a flyer id points twenty two to twenty three and operator ID points 24 to 27 before you fly. So we are going to explain every part, not parts, I meant every point for the drone tests. We will talk before we talk about the important part that this is a UK license, not USA license. So let's start. We are going to explain the first part. Flying safely and responsibly points 1 to 2. Number 1. You're responsible for flying safely whenever you fly. Number 2. Always keep your drone or motor aircraft in direct sight and make sure you have a full view of the surrounding airspace. Now we are going to explain every point. Number one, you're responsible for flying safely whenever you fly. As well as you fly within the law, you should always be ready for something to be go wrong with your drone or motor aircraft. This is especially important if you fly your drone or motor aircraft over people. You could be fined for breaking the law when flying your drone or motor aircraft in the most serious cases you could be sent to prison number two always keep your drone or motor aircraft in direct sight and make sure you have a full view of the surrounding airspace this is the best way to be sure of spotting any nearby hazards in the air or on the ground and avoiding collisions. You must be able to see your drone or motor aircraft without using a telephoto lens, electronic viewing equipment such as a smartphone, tablet or video goggles normal glasses and contact lenses are fine so now we are going to explain the second part which is where you can fly point three to seven so number three never fly above 400 feet or 120 meters number four keep the right distance from people property people property vehicles and busy areas number five stay well away from airports airfields and aircrafts 
Number six, always check and follow any flying restriction. Number seven, check for local restriction and temporary hazards. Now we are going to explain every point. Where you can fly. Height limits and distance from people pool, buildings, crowds and vehicle. A restriction on flying need to airports. Number three, never fly above 400 feet or 120 meters. Your drone model aircraft must never be more than 400 feet or 120 meters from the surface of the earth. This will help you to avoid colliding with planes, helicopters and other aircrafts which normally fly higher than this. Always look and listen out for other aircraft that may be flying below 400 feet or 120 meters such as ambulance and police helicopters flying where there are hills, mountains or cliffs. If you fly where the ground level falls or rises such as over hills, mountains or cliffs, you'll need to adjust the height of your drone or motor aircraft so that it's never more than 400 feet or 120 meters from the surface. Point four, keep the right distance from people, property, vehicles and busy areas. Never fly your drone or motor aircraft closer than the legal distance. The distance in point four applies to drones and motor aircraft fitted with cameras even if you don't have a camera you must still fly safely so following these points will help you do this flying over people never fly closer to people than 50 meters even when your drone is more than 50 meters away from people it's safer to avoid flying a hovering directly over them you're responsible for flying safely whenever you fly during takeoff and landing you can reduce this distance down to 30 meters these limits do not apply to you or people who are with you and are involved in what you're doing such as friends and families out flying with you. Building, structures, vehicles, trains, boats and other types of transports. Never fly closer to these than 50 meters to building, cars, trains or boats. Does not apply to those you own or where the owner has given you permission to fly closer. built up and busy areas. Never fly closer to built up and busy areas than 150 meters. Not 50 meters, 150 meters. Never fly above these areas at any height. Example of built up and busy areas. Cities and towns, villages, beaches and recreational parts that are part of a city, town or village, housing, estates, schools and offices. Retail, warehouse, industrial and business parks, theme parks. Never fly closer than 
150 meters not 50 meters remember to build up areas never fly directly over a built up area the law refers to built up and busy areas as congested areas crowds of more than 1000 people not less more than 1,000 people. Never fly closer to crowds of more than 1,000 people. Remember? Remember what I did say before that? Not less than, but more than 1,000 people. Than 150 meters, just like what I said last time. One, 150 meters. Never fly above crowds at any height. A crowd is any organized open air gathering of more than 1,000 people. Remember, not less but more than 1,000 people, such as at a sports event, music festival, or concert, march, or rally, carnival. Number five, stay well away from airports, airfields, and aircrafts. If you endanger the safety of an aircraft, you could go to prison for five years. For five years. Most airports and airfields have a flight restriction zone FRZ. You must never, never fly in this zone unless you have a permission from the airport the zone is in place to avoid any collisions with aircraft at or near the airport always check before you fly so there's a website over here right over here it's a website gives detail of airfield restriction some drone apps also give detail of flight restriction zone, like DJI Go 4. Number 6. Always check and follow any flying restriction. This is important. There are different types of restriction on where you can fly always check before you fly you can check using there are two websites so one will be over here one will be over here the, so the first one such as those listed on dronesafe.uk remember uk not usa nats no that's the second website is the air traffic Control Organization, the Aeronautical Information Publication. If you use an app, make sure you understand exactly what information it will give you. This is important for the license. Restricted airspace. This includes areas around prison, military bases, royal palaces, government sites, and more. Events. Flying may be temporarily banned in specific areas during some events. This is so important, such as air shows or festivals. This is to keep everyone safe. There may also be security reason for banning flying, such as at political conferences. Emergency incidents. Temporarily, restriction may be 
established at very short notice due to emergency incidents such as road traffic accidents, fire and floods. Official information on active affecting flying called NOTAMS, which is notice to airmen. NOTAMS are the official notices and activities that affect where aircraft, including drones and motor aircraft, can fly. Many drones app include detail of NOTAMS. You can also find NOTAMS at the NATS drone website right over here. Geo awareness software. Your drone or motor aircraft may include software designed to help you avoid flying in certain restricted areas you should not alter or disable this software if your drone or motor aircraft has it number seven check for location restriction and temporarily hazards always check before you fly and be ready to respond respond if anything changed. Bylaws. Bylaws may restrict when and where can you fly. Look out for local signs for information and contact details where you can find out more bylaws are unlikely to be shown on apps or drone websites. Structures in a, the area. Check for any structures such as crans, masts and wires. Remember you must be at least 50 meters away from these. Do not fly if there are structures in the area that will mean it's not safe or legal. Animals. Do not fly where you disturb animals. other aircrafts. This includes unusual specialist flying activities such as air ambulance, police helicopter, light aircraft, military low flying, crop spraying and electricity pylon surveying. Always be ready to respond in the safest way possible so that you keep everyone safe. Signs. Check for signs that says you cannot fly drones or motor aircraft. Some sites may have restrictions that are not listed in apps and other services. extra flying permission. If you want to do more types of flying, you'll need to get the correct permission, which is the website over here. So, uh, for example, if you want to fly at or near an airport, you need permission from the airport. If you want to fly at different heights, or distant to the ones in this code, you need permission from the Civil Aviation Authority. If you want to fly closer to or over a built up or busy area, you need a permission from the Civil Aviation Authority.
if you want to fly to make money or for any kind of payment, you need permission from commercial operation from the Civil Aviation Authority. From time to time, the Civil Aviation Authority may issue general exemption and permission, which is the website right over here. Making every flight safe. Point 8 to 15. What to do before flying during a flight and after a flight. 8. Make sure you know what your drone or motor aircraft cannot do or can do. 9. Make sure your drone or motor aircraft is fit to fly. 10. Do not fly if the weather could affect your flight. 11. Make sure your fit to fly 12 take action quickly and safely if the situation in the air or on the ground changes 13 report any dangerous incidents or near misses 14 do not use your drone or motor aircraft to make money or for any kind of payment 15. If you fly your drone or motor aircraft for recreation, you can choose whether or not to have insurance. Now we are going to explain every point. Number 8. Make sure you know what your drone or motor aircraft can or cannot do. Make sure you have read any instruction before you fly. Key points to know are how far your drone or motor aircraft can fly, how long your drone or motor aircraft can fly before running low on power or fuel. Whether your drone or motor aircraft has a return to home function, that means it can fly back to you if there is a problem. Number 9. Make sure your drone or motor aircraft is fit to fly. Check fuel and battery levels. Take special care to check the fuel and battery levels will last through your flight. This includes any extra fuel you might need it in an emergency or for flying in difficult weather such as windy conditions. Remember to check the battery power in the controller too. Check any built-in software is up to date. The built-in software called firmware controls important navigation and flying controls. Depending on the type of drone or motor aircraft you have, this could include the latest information on flight restriction zone and other airspace restriction so that your drone knows to avoid them. How your drone uses its power, how your drone knows its position, how your drone lands if there's a problem keep this software up to date will also help to protect against cyber attacks follow the instruction to update the built-in software firmware always check that the software has updated correctly before going fly Number 10. Do not fly if the weather could affect your flight. So, we're going to tell you three sections. Affecting your drone or motor aircraft. Affecting you. The last. Make sure your drone or motor aircraft will work if the temperature is low. So, we're going to explain every section. 
affecting your drone or model aircraft. Some of the things to look out for winds could blow your drone or model aircraft off course or make it difficult to fly safe. Wind on the ground is often very different to the wind at height. Rain, snow and cold weather could all stop parts of your drone or model aircraft from working. Fog could mean you lost sight of your drone or model aircraft. Glare from the sun could mean you lose sight of your drone or model aircraft. Affecting you. This is important. Some of the things to look out for. Cold or wet weather could affect your ability to control your drone or motor aircraft safely. That's dangerous. Standing out in the sun could affect your ability to concentrate. Make sure your drone or motor aircraft will work if the temperature is low. Follow the manufacturer's guidance on the safe temperatures to fly at. Also, some types of battery, such as lithium-ion batteries, do not last as long in cold weather and this may reduce the amount of time you can fly. Number 11. Make sure you're fit to fly. We will explain three sections, which is Section A, do not drink and fly. Section B, do not fly under the influence of drugs or medicine. Section C and the last, do not fly if you're tired or unwell. So we're going to explain all the sections. So... Section A. Do not drink and fly. Alcohol will seriously affect your judgment and ability. Section B. Do not fly under the influence of drugs or medicine. Check with your doctor or pharmacist if you are taking medicines that may affect your ability to operate your drone or motor aircraft safely. Do not fly if they advise you that your ability to fly may be affected. Section C and the last. Do not fly if you're tired or unwell. Your judgment and ability could be affected if you are tired or unwell. Number 12. Take action quickly and safely if the situation in the air or on the ground changes. Always be ready to land your drone or motor aircraft and wait until it is safe to fly again for example, if a group of people or animals turn up in the area where you are flying, you may need to adjust the height you're flying at. Never fly in areas where the emergency services are responding to an incident. Number 13. Report any dangerous incident or name misses. If something dangerous happens while you're flying your drone or model aircraft, you must report the incident to f the Civil Aviation Authority, which is a website right over here. If you crash or are forced to land somewhere, that you can't get to your drone or motor aircraft, you should tell the site owner. This is particularly important at sensitive sites to avoid a security response. 
If you see anybody using a drone or motor aircraft in a suspicious or dangerous way, tell the police or site security, such as airport security. Number 14. Do not use your drone or motor aircraft to make money or for any kind of payment. If you want to do this, you'll need to get a permission from the Civil Aviation Authority that allows you to conduct commercial operations. Number 15. If you fly your drone or motor aircraft for recreation, you can choose whether or not to have insurance. Insurance is optional if you're flying for recreation. However, you should remember that you're responsible for your action, which means you could be held personally liable for any injury or damage you cause while you're flying. This means you may want to consider getting insurance to protect yourself if your flight is for any reason other than recreation, you do need insurance. Protecting people's privacy, point 16 to 21. Number 16, respect other people and their privacy. Number 17. Make sure you know what your camera can do and the kind of images it can take. Number 18. Making sure you can be clearly seen when you are out flying. Number 19. Let people know before you start recording. Number 20. Think before sharing photos or video. Number 21. Keep photos and video secure. Now we are going to explain every point. Making sure that you don't invade anyone's privacy when you're out flying. What you should and should not do with photos and videos. Number 16. Respect other people and their privacy. If you use a camera with your drone or motor aircraft, you must respect other people's privacy when taking pictures or videos. If you take a video or a photo of someone where they can expect privacy, such as inside their home or garden, you're likely to be breaking data protection laws. It is against the law to take photographs or video for criminal or terrorist purposes. If your drone or motor aircraft has a camera, any photos or videos you take may be covered by the General Data Protection Regulation GDPR. Number 17. Make sure you know what your camera can do and the kind of images it can take. Knowing this will help the, to reduce the risk of taking photos or recording video that invade privacy. Make sure you know what quality you can record, how close your camera can zoom in, if you can start and stop recording when you are flying.
Number 18. Making sure you can be clearly seen when you are out flying. This means people will know who's responsible for your drone or motor aircraft. Number 19. Let people know before you start recording. In some cases, this will be easy. For example, if you are taking a photo of family and friends at a family barbecue. In other cases, this will be less practical, so you must be careful to respect everyone's right to privacy. Remember, you must never fly over organized crowds of more than 1000 people remember not less but more than 1000 people we did explain this before number 20 think before sharing photos or video avoid sharing anything that could be unfair or harmful to anyone. Think carefully about who could see your photos and video, especially before posting them on social media. Apply the same common sense approach that you would with images or video recorded on a smartphone or digital camera. Number 21. Keep photos and video secure. This is important. Store images safely. Delete anything you don't need. If you record images for commercial use, you'll need to meet specific requirements as a data controller. Fifth part, extra information. Getting a flyer ID, points 22 to 23, and operator ID, points 24 to 27, before you fly. Number 22. You must pass the theory test to get a flyer ID before you fly. Number 23. You must take the theory test every three years. Number 24. Person or organization that's responsible for a drone or motor aircraft must register to get a operator ID. Number 25. Label your drone or motor aircraft with your operator ID. Number 26. Make sure that Anyone flying your drone or motor aircraft has a valid flyer ID. Number 27. Keep your operator ID up to date. Now we are going to explain every point. Extra information. Getting a flyer ID and operator ID before you fly. Points. 22 to 27. What you need to do before you fly. Two things are needed before flying a drone or motor aircraft between 250 grams and 20 kilograms. The person who will fly must pass the theory test to get a flyer ID. The person or organization that's responsible for the drone or motor aircraft must register to get an operator ID. If you want to fly and are also responsible for a drone or motor aircraft, you'll need to pass the test to get a flyer ID and register to get an operator ID. Fly ID. Number 22. You must pass the theory test to get a flyer ID before you fly. 
children and adults must take the test. There is no age limit. So that means you could be three, two, or four. But I don't think you could be one to fly the drone because that's a little age. Children under 13. Children under 13 must have a parent or guardian with them when they take the test to get their flyer ID. Drones or modular aircraft that weigh less than 250 grams. You do not need to pass the test before for flying a drone or motor aircraft below 250 grams but it's better to have a license under 250 grams because if you want to drone over 250 grams you need to do the license so it's better to have a license under 250 grams Flying indoors or in a netted area, you do not need to pass the test if you will only ever fly indoors or in securely netted area. Other types of drone or motor aircraft flying. You'll need to get permission from the Civil Aviation Authority, CAA, or an organization acting on its behalf if you want to do either of the following. Flying a drone or motor aircraft that is above 20 kilograms. Legally fly outside the rules in this code. The type of permission you need depends on the size and type of drone or motor aircraft you want to fly, where you want to fly, how high you want to fly, whether you want to fly for a hobby or for commercial reasons. You can find out more about permissions and exemption at the Civil Aviation Authority, which is a website right over here. Permissions that come with membership of a club or associations. In some cases, being a member of a recognized club or association gives you additional flying permissions. For example, you may be able to fly in an area that is normally restricted. Check with your club or association before you fly. Flying for commercial reasons. If you want to fly for commercial reasons, you'll need to get a permission from the CAA. Commercial means using a drone or motor aircraft in return for payment in any way. For example, if someone pays you to record or take photo of an event, if you already have a permission such as a PFCO permission for commercial operations, you may be exempt from taking the test until 30 June 2020. General Exemption E4956, which is a website right over here. If you want to fly a drone or motor aircraft at or near an airport, you must get a permission from the airport first. You can get more information about how to do this at the Drone Safe website, which is a website right over here. Number 23. You must take the theory test every three years. Your flyer ID will last for three years.
operator ID. Number 24. Person or organization that's responsible for a drone or motor aircraft must register to get an operator ID. You must be over 18 to do this. If you're under 18, you'll need to ask a parent guardian or other appropriate adult to register. Who is responsible for a drone or motor aircraft? The law says that the person or organisation that has the management of a drone or motor aircraft is its operator. This will usually be the person or organisation that owns it. That's not always the case. For example, if someone under 18 owns a drone or motor aircraft, they can't be the operator. Read further guidance on operator responsibilities, which is a website right over here. Number 25. Label your drone or motor aircraft with your operator ID. Use the same operator ID to label every drone or motor aircraft you're responsible for. Number 26. Make sure that anyone flying your drone or motor aircraft has a valid flyer ID. Number 27. Keep your operator ID up to date. Your operator ID will last for 12 months, which is a year. I wish you passed the test easily because you learned all the points that I told you about. So subscribe to my channel for more videos and hit the bell button. If you want to have any question, comment down below. Thank you for watching. See you on the next videos. Specific Kurukuma <laughs> 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 or digital camera. <laughs> two, try two. Scene three, try three.